Good morning, I'm Aaron Kramer, the President and CEO of BSR, and um, I am very, very excited to welcome you all to the opening of the BSR Conference 2012. And it's always an honor to do this, but this year it's really special because it's our 20th anniversary uh, and our 20th conference. And so uh, we'll, uh, I think we'll look at some, we'll look back a little bit, we'll look ahead a lot and take this opportunity uh, to think about how we can, to use the theme of the conference, press fast forward and make even more progress towards a just and sustainable world. Uh, and I do want to uh, look ahead quite a lot, but uh, before doing that, I think it's a good idea on this occasion to take a look uh, back a little bit and think a bit about where we've come from, because that, of course, will help us figure out where to go. Twenty years ago, the world was a very, very different place. There was very little email. Uh, there was no Google. Uh, tablets were something you used for pain relief. Uh, and four gigabytes of flash memory, which is what you get in an iPad uh, Nano, would have set you back $500,000. I looked that up. It's hard to believe. Um, China was a poor country. A lot of people thought it had a bright future and, and, and might grow. Uh, in 1992, the Maastricht Treaty uh, was signed in, in Europe, setting the stage for uh, the Euro, a story that is still, of course, playing itself out. Um, in New York, Michael Bloomberg was a businessman. He has another job now. Uh, he purchased a radio station that was the beginning of a bigger uh, media group. Uh, and at the end of 1992, he looked at the Dow Index, which was holding steady at 3,300, uh, one digit less than it is right now, 13.3. Also in 1992, BSR got started. And like, uh, like a lot of organizations, uh, fledgling organizations, there were big ambitions and modest resources, um, but a group of uh, really visionary business people got together and said, business has a lot to offer the world, a lot to offer the world in terms of uh, creating the kind of prosperity that we all want, and the world has a lot that it can teach business that perhaps business wasn't thinking about. And uh, through some of the great leadership uh, at that time, people like Arnold Hyatt, our founding board uh, co-chair, Bob Dunn, our founding CEO, Helen Mills, founding co-chair, Josh Mailman, a big supporter from the Social Venture Network, uh, which gave rise to BSR, um, they got this whole party started. And uh, in 1993, we had our very first conference, uh, there was a, a fellow in Washington who had just started a new job that year, uh, Bill Clinton, and he came down the street to speak at our first conference, and uh, we were off to the races. And in 1992, uh, things were also very different when it comes to the kind of work that we, we do. Um, very few companies were looking at greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, to my knowledge, there was one person in the business world uh, with... Uh, the words human rights on a business card. There were no sustainability reports to speak of, no chief sustainability officers what, whatsoever, no carbon trading, no ecosystem services, none of that. All of those things over the last 20 years uh, have, been, have been created, and happily so. And to borrow a phrase that's been used in the presidential election here in the United States uh, this year, you did build that, I think I can say safely. And in the last 20 years, uh, because of all of that, a lot of amazing things have happened. Um, and the world has changed, and uh, as we're looking at our 20th anniversary, and uh, I'll talk a little bit about our 20th anniversary report, where we point to the fact that everything has changed, and at the same time, nothing has changed. Uh, but a lot of good things have developed. Poverty uh, has been reduced. More people have moved out of poverty in the last 25 years than ever before in human history. That's really a staggering concept. And GDP per capita around the world has grown by 80% over the last 20 years, and that coincides with, as we all know, a huge increase in, in the number of people uh, inhabiting the planet. Natural resource intensity at the same time has gone down, so uh, more economic activity but less natural resources needed to fuel that prosperity. Natural resource intensity globally is down 30% over the last 20 years, a great accomplishment. Energy efficiency globally is down by just under one quarter. 
Human rights principles have been embraced now by hundreds of companies. None of that had happened 20 years ago. And we see lots and lots of collaborations looking at everything from removing toxic materials from shoes uh, to promoting freedom of expression on the internet uh, to improving labor practices in many, many industries. So a lot has been accomplished and that's something that all of us in this very vibrant community have had quite a lot uh, to do with. It's a big success and we should be really proud of that. At the same time, there's a lot more uh, to do. We know that the climate is continuing to warm. Uh, greenhouse gas emissions have grown by 36 percent over the last 20 years. And the 10 hottest years on record uh, have all come since 1998. Biodiversity is shrinking. The Living Planet Index has seen a reduction by 12 percent over the last 20 years. Too many people, and, and women in particular, uh, don't have the opportunity to realize their dreams and uh, have a degree of autonomy and economic development uh, that they need and that we need. Um, and while this is a little bit harder to quantify in some ways, we know that markets uh, continue uh, to build bubbles better than they build long-term sustainable growth that comes from patient capital. So we have a long ways to go. You know, the carbon markets sum up this concept of everything's changed, nothing's changed very well. Uh, the uh, carbon markets have grown by 1,200 percent since 2005. Um, and yet, they represent one five hundredth of the world's GDP, 0.0002 percent, if I have that right. You know, the occasion of the U.S. presidential election is another good example. We gathered here the morning after the election in 2008 in this very same ballroom, and even though the economy was really in free fall around the world at that point, there was a lot of optimism. But four years later, uh, the green uh, promises that uh, we uh, thought might be realized that morning have turned in some ways to black, as in coal, which has gotten a lot more love in the presidential election uh, than climate change. This was the first time since 1988 that the term climate change was never ever mentioned in a presidential debate in the United States. And that's really tragic and really a problem. And so there is little doubt today that uh, politicians uh, have wavered. They may have lost their nerve. The mainstream media have moved on in many ways from the attention they've been paying. Uh, and consumers, we know, are very, very fickle. BSR has been in a constant state of reinvention over the last 20 years, but our mission has stayed the same, working with business to create a just and sustainable world. Um, what we mean by that is, in some ways, fairly simple, in an inclusive economy, something that really works for everyone, a transparent economy, because that is just the condition of the world in which we live, and, of course, an environmentally sustainable economy. And despite a lot of the great things that have been built, uh, we're not there yet, as we all know. Um, when we thought about our 20th anniversary, we thought about whether we ought to produce um, you know, a, a, a specific set of goals and targets, and we concluded that actually we all know where we need to go. We know what the core elements of a sustainable economy look like. We don't think we need more roadmaps. What we need to do is get to where we're going more quickly. And that's why we chose the, frame, the, the term, uh, the theme fast forward uh, for this year's conference. First thing we need to do is to continue to push business integration. A lot of great things have happened over the last 10, 20 years in this, in this way, but uh, we need to go further. Uh, we need to look more at uh, product development. We need to look more at incentives inside business, and indeed we need to look more at ways that we actually measure uh, business success, bringing externalities into how companies measure their performance. Second, we need to push even harder for financial market reform, as we all know, and as Al Gore said very eloquently when he opened the conference last year, uh, there's too much short-termism. We all know this is the case, and businesses have a role to play. Uh, businesses uh, probably need to put on uh, that, the advocacy hat and begin to push for, for markets to think differently about what success looks like, what progress looks like, uh, and, and try to change things. Integrated reporting uh, will make a difference, but it won't do everything. Uh, companies have a voice, and companies should leverage that voice to push markets to think differently about how they do things. 
Third, we need to look fresh, uh, fresh at partnerships. One of the great successes over the last 20 years has been that business and civil society and government are working together far more than was the case uh, in those days. There's a long list of partnerships and many of them have been very, very successful. But, but both individually and collectively, too few of them are achieving truly systemic change. Uh, and so I think we as a community need to have the courage to sunset collaborations that aren't really achieving their goals. We need to bring together collaborations uh, to avoid duplication and focus more on systemic change. Fourth and finally, we need to capture the power of empowered uh, individuals and connected communities. I actually think that uh, our achievement of a just and sustainable world will depend a lot on things that actually have very little to do explicitly with sustainability. And of course, information technology, biotechnology, these are examples of things that have immense potential, to, well, are changing the world, and have immense potential for uh, producing more sustainable outcomes. But the problem we all know is that right now, empowered individuals uh, may uh, simply move towards more consumption rather than better consumption and new models. So businesses that really think about how our world is changing and how to leverage uh, the information and the autonomy that all of us have. Three or four billion people have access to more information than Bill Clinton had the day he left the White House uh, today. It's a staggering thought. How do we leverage that for more sustainable outcomes? So to press fast forward, uh, we need to push further on integration. We need to push further on financial market reform. We need to have more powerful partnerships and we need to leverage uh, autonomous individuals and connected communities. We want to invest more time and energy on collaboration because we think that uh, better systems uh, that are produced by collaboration uh, are absolutely crucial to achieving our collective goals. Why is that? Well, we can't wait for others to solve this for us and of course uh, the top-down models coming from with government-led change are not likely. Those are 20th century models that don't seem to be uh, working in the 21st century. We also know that even the best companies, and maybe especially the best companies, know that they can only go so far. They can only reach a certain level of performance if the systems around them aren't creating the kinds of incentives that are, ne that are needed. The third reason why we think this is important is we're really proud of the network that we've helped to build and that's represented here in this room, and we want to leverage the power of this network for even greater change. We want to do this under the, the banner of uh, what we're calling the Collaboration Laboratory, or CoLab, uh, which we will build over the course of the next three years as a way to create multi-sector, multi-year uh, projects that will create greater systemic change. And here are a couple of examples. One builds on a great project that we're very proud of, the HER project, a project that has allowed us to look at women's empowerment uh, beginning in global supply chains, looking at women's health. In 2013, we'll be expanding this project both thematically to include financial literacy, awareness, and autonomy. Um, and we want to take it larger. We want to scale it. We want to have more impact, and we invite you to join us. We also want to build on our Future of Fuels project, where we brought together commercial users of fuel uh, with producers, as well as NGOs and government uh, agencies, to look at how we can create a more sustainable transportation fuel supply chain. We also intend to launch an initiative on land use to look at the stress nexus of food, energy, and water that touches every company in every industry. And we want to we come up with some solutions. They may be value chain solutions, capacity building, public policy intervention, or, or, or product development. Uh, and find some new ways to make progress on this very, very crucial issue. That vision is even more powerful than it was 20 years ago, and the prize for creating a just and sustainable world is even greater than it was uh, 20 years ago. We are all immensely privileged to be able uh, to be part of this great project, and it is inspiring. Uh, it motivates me each and every day, as I think it does you, uh, and we hope that this conference will refresh you, uh, inspire you, uh, arm you with some great new ideas, and send you out uh, on Friday with either more, even more momentum to get great things done.